Over the last, I would say now it's been 20 years, I've been developing a whole set of imagination exercises, techniques that a person can practice every day, the purpose of which is to expand the scope, range, and power of his, her own imagination. I saw a need for that because it's a kind of mercurial faculty in people. They occasionally feel that they're accessing imagination or using it, but it comes and goes, it's spotty, it doesn't seem much of the time to be all that important. So I thought, okay, let's work on this as a practical thing, just as if, to put it in very gross terms, you wanted to get in better physical shape, and so you began to walk, you began to run every day, you go to the gym, you play a sport, whatever you do, you hike, you climb mountains, because you want to get into better physical shape. You practice. There must be an analog to that in the imagination. Because I knew from being a writer and also a painter since I was 22, that imagination is just sitting there waiting, you know, filing its fingernails, saying, whenever you're ready, I'm ready to launch, you know. And when you do launch, it's quite extraordinary what happens. As part of the matrix, sewn into the weave of the matrix, is this notion that power is dangerous and that it should only be uh, given to those who are leading us. But for the individual, uh, it's a very dangerous thing and it, it has bad connotations and it should be avoided at all costs. And in my relationships with people over the years, especially since I became a reporter in 1982, I found this kind of theme, subliminal theme, woven in over and over and over again. It colored so many stories that other reporters were doing, their viewpoints, their commentaries. The whole orientation was as if the way to look at the world is to realize, first and foremost, that power for the individual is a dangerous thing. Once we've all agreed upon that, then <laughs> we can see what our position is in the world, and we can go from there. So I began to see this more and more as a primary assumption. And, of course, my experience was that imagination and creative, living the creative life, were actually the cornerstones of that individual power. And so what all of these people were really saying was those cornerstones were illegitimate, invalid, a delusion of some kind. The war against the individual, more and more, that's what I began to see uh, strangling this culture as it declined and continued to decline in my years of working in media as a reporter and talking to editors, pitching stories, writing for newspapers and magazines and so forth, meeting these people, I could see over and over again that they were all on some level absolutely surrendering any power that they thought they had in the service of the collective, the group, uh, some ideal that turned out to be extremely perverted because it always targeted the individual when you actually looked at it. And I became to view this as a sort of intelligence agency operation as part of the matrix. And when I spoke with certain insiders that I interviewed in The Matrix Revealed, they confirmed this. They said, absolutely, I mean, are you kidding? Of course, that's the target. That's what we're aiming at. The individual must fall. That's the thing that has to be taken out of the equation in order for the new world, the new age, the new uh, era to come into play.
away and to actually work. That's what we have to destroy. And uh, so I, I guess you could say at that point I decided, this, no, <laughs> that's just no, that's not, <laughs> that's not the way it's going to be, period. And my commitment to everything that I've been doing since then went to a completely different level. 